What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. Today's going to be a little bit different style of video than I typically do. I mentioned a little while ago about wanting to incorporate some kind of tools and shop infrastructure kind of behind the scenes stuff. So that's what today's going to be. We need to show the Vapor Blaster some love. I use this thing multiple times a week, sometimes daily, and it has gotten absolutely disgusting. You're supposed to change the media and change the water out pretty regularly on this. I'm ashamed to admit that it has been kind of a lot longer than they recommend since I've done it. So we have a fresh bag of media. We have all the um, chemicals and everything to put in it. So I'm just going to show you guys what it takes to clean this thing out and get it back in tip top shape. So before I pull this thing outside and clean it all up, I'm going to walk you guys through as briefly as I can the kind of setup that I have here. So this machine has a reservoir at the bottom. This whole section down here holds water. It also holds the glass media. It has our pump and everything all down in there. On the left side, there is a kind of fresh water source that I set up. So originally from the factory, this machine is designed to be what they call open loop, which means it has a fresh water source that would come from like a garden hose that comes into the system, comes through our kind of handheld sprayer and also through the little windscreen and windshield cleaner uh, that sprays down right there. So that's where the fresh water would come in. You would also need to drain that excess water out. Because I don't have a water source or a good drain in my shop, I designed this kind of homemade uh, fresh water system over here that turns this into what they would call a closed loop system. So how I set this up is we have a bucket here. The bottom of this bucket has a hole and it has a couple of different layers of filter material in there. The idea there is I'm filtering out any of the glass bead or any kind of muck that's floating on top of the water. I don't want that into my fresh water source. Once the water is kind of filtered through, it drops down into this bottom container. This bottom container holds, I don't know, I would say somewhere five, seven gallons of water, something like that. There is a uh, submersible pump in the back there that's operated off of a foot pedal here so you hear that when I hit this foot pedal it pumps water up through that red hose and just takes the place of what would be you know connecting directly to the tap of your house so over time this filter uh, gets clogged and this takes forever to drain out this water just gets nasty over time you know spraying off gunk and oil and grease and anything that's on the parts so the water inside of this machine over time gets really really gross so that's what we need to change. So once we get it outside, I can kind of tell you about these different valves and how we're gonna use them to clean this thing out. Got everything out in the driveway. You can see now out in the sun just how gross this thing is. Under here is our little water reservoir. You can kind of see the pump and everything down in there. So this generally goes in three steps. First step is this top valve, which is just to get the water down to its normal level. That's what I described a little while ago is going straight into my bucket with a little filter in it. For actually removing all of the water, we're gonna go to the next one down. That's gonna get like, I would say probably 90% of the water out of the system. The very bottom one is the bigger one. That's for actually getting all of our media out. So I'm just gonna try and capture as much of it in this container as I can, uh, just because I don't really want all that glass bead and everything. Uh, all around my driveway and in my grass. I'll have to figure out what to do with it later. But I need to uh, get a little funnel or something to kind of close this gap, and we'll open this thing up and drain it out. I'm gonna be using this second slightly broken bucket as a kind of auxiliary here. actually remember the capacity of this thing and how much water it holds probably 10 gallons something like that that's a very rough guess we're just gonna let that drain out for a while I got most of the water out there's still some in there I want to use that extra water to kind of flush some of the uh, media out so let's see what happens Crank this big boy here. Nothing. Hello? <laughs> it's like 
dirty mud coming out of there. So what I'm gonna do is hook up my freshwater hose. Oh, now it's coming. It was literally so clogged. How disgusting that is. Why did I let it go this long? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of keep repeating this process until we can get all of this out. I'm gonna do a little at a time. Once this is all the way done, all that's left in there is a little bit of the media. That's why I'm gonna take my fresh hose, my fresh water hose leave this open and just start to blast all on the inside of this get all of the media that's stuck to the walls and everything all the flush down to the bottom so we can get everything out uh, ideally only fresh water is going to come out of this when we're done So with all the water and media out of this thing, you can kind of see how everything works. So this is the main pump. This pump is upgraded from the one that comes on this machine normally. Uh, I was kind of burning through the other ones, so we went with one from a, uh, a little bit larger machine. But basically what this does is it sucks in water and glass bead at the bottom, kind of forces it up through here, and then it splits. Some of it goes through these gray pipes and is used to kind of agitate everything. Ideally, we want all of the glass bead and water to be kind of evenly mixed and distributed around. Otherwise, we're just gonna have glass bead getting sucked up at the bottom. We need it to be all mixed up. So that's what the point of these are, is to, to kind of help get that all mixed up. And the rest of it comes up through this clear tube and comes around and then meets into our main kind of gun. The red hose is our airline. So it's kind of a water and glass bead mixture going into the bottom of the gun and then high pressure air hitting it to kind of speed it up right through the uh, little nozzle. And that's kind of how we get our, our cleaning action. So there's still a ton of, kind of grime and stuff on here that isn't really coming off with my regular hose. So I'm actually gonna hit it with my pressure washer now and just really try to clean this thing out. Got it all cleaned out for the most part. Figured I'd show you guys my kind of rudimentary uh, filter bucket system here. This is version one. I'm kind of brainstorming about how to do a kind of more official version. I hate how I basically have open water in my shop at most times. It's like an opportunity for stuff to fall in there. Um, so we'll get to that at some point, but basically in the bottom of this, there is kind of multiple layers of filters that are actually made for like a pond in your backyard, like a fish pond or something like that. So I buy it and then cut it into little circles. You can kind of see there's a grid pattern in there. I'm gonna wash all that out and then replace all of these. All this is designed to do is try and get as much of that media and debris and stuff out of this as possible. It's not a huge deal if a little bit gets through, but we want this to be you know somewhat fresh. So I'll clean that out, kind of scrub the inside of this bucket, make sure it's as clean as possible, throw the new filter material in, and this will pretty much be ready to go. Now that everything is kind of flushed out and as clean as we want, there's still some like hazy residue on here, but this is uh, pretty clean, especially compared to what it was when we started. We are ready to fill this thing up with our water and our media. So the media that I use, this particular um, batch is gonna be directly from Vapor Honing Technologies. 
I have also gotten media from Granger before, but what we're looking for here is this 170 to 325 mesh glass bead. I've also seen 170 to one, uh, 325 uh, sieve rating, same thing. So if you happen to have one of these machines, you're curious what media I use, 170 to 325 works great. And that's basically just like the size of the individual glass beads and you know how coarse they are. You don't want to use like a glass bead from like a Harbor Freight or something. It's going to be way too rough and it's going to give you a very dull finish. This gives you a nice satin finish. I also have some of their uh, antimicrobial agent and their rust inhibitor that I mentioned earlier. Because so obviously if we're spraying water all over like a bare um, you know, metal piece, we don't want it to rust immediately. So that rust inhibitor goes in the water and uh, keeps that kind of flash rusting from happening. First things first though, I need to fill it with water. We're just going to open up the very top valve, fill it up to that point, then we will add all this. While that's filling up, we have a, quite the mess to clean up out here. This is all of the material, the media that came out. So I'm gonna try and get as much of this water out as I can. I'm just gonna leave this out in the sun, let all of this water evaporate, and then it'll be pretty easy to throw all of this just in uh, the plastic bag the new stuff came in and we can just throw it away all filled up now i just can put all 25 pounds of this media directly in over the top and i already uh, put in the two chemicals we're ready to wheel this thing back into place everything's all put back into place and ready to go got some fresh water in our container over here our fresh water supply uh, with some rust inhibitor as well also have this full of fresh water i use this to kind of uh, rinse the parts after they come out so you can kind of rinse it with the kind of handheld sprayer but to go to the next level i dunk the parts in there really well kind of move any linkage or anything then i take my air hose with a little uh, gun on it and blow out all the passages just to you know, make sure we don't have any glass bead or anything stuck inside of a, you know, fuel pipe or something inside of a carb body. We want to make sure it's clean and totally functional when it comes out. So that's going to be it. It took me about an hour and a half or so. I am extremely dirty now. Uh, so I need to go in and take a shower. The reason that I wanted to get this done is I actually have a kind of a surprise guest uh, coming later this week to Vapor Blast some parts. Not sure when you guys will see that uh, collaboration but it'll be sometime in the future so it kind of encouraged me to get this done it was much needed anyway so i appreciate you guys watching again i know this one was a little bit different than what i normally do but we're uh, planning a huge kind of shop redo because <laughs> look at this place it looks like a, a tornado went through here so that's going to be a series coming up over the next couple of weeks is i'm going to completely gut this place basically put it all back together new tools toolboxes all kinds of stuff it's going to be completely different than it is now and i'm super excited to get it organized so appreciate you guys watching this video as always and i'll catch you on the next one